a praise offering. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are you excited to hear the word of God today? He is the tallest. He is the anointed. He is your youth pastor. Put your hands together for the reverend Ignatius Malimo. A.K.A. Aduyu Ashetani. Yeah. A big hand clap for him. Father, we pray for grace over your servant. Bestow your hand on him as he ministers to us this morning. In Jesus' name. Before you sit, um, while I was preparing this word, an old school song, millennials who are here, praise the Lord. We used to sing in high school, and today we'll try and do it. So it goes like this. That's how we used to start. Kufika Yerusalem. Repeat. Peke yangu sitaweza. Safari ndefu ya shida. Peke yangu sitaweza. Kufika Yerusalem. Nipengo za kushi. Za kushi na majaribu ya sheta. Ya sheta ni. So that one. You know high school. Nibesikia watu millennials wako pale juu. So you just do like this. Hmm? So please start like that, then beat the drum like that. Just do like that. We are starting the word in few. This is high school, 1980s. Just do like that. Okay. Yes, 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 Safari ndefu ya shida You sing like me Seke yangu sitaweza Kufika Yerusalemu Repeat Peke yangu sitaweza Safari ndefu ya shida Peke yangu sitaweza Sema Kufika Yerusalemu Nipe Nipe nguvuza kushinda Majaribu ya shetani Safari yangu na Yesu na oda wa roho yangu tena nipengu buza kushi za kushinda za kushinda safari nefu na Yesu na oda wa roho e na oda kwa nini mzaliwa lini e na oda na oda wa roho yangu na oda now the water, eh, now the, now the, eh, now the, tell your neighbor, now the, kaini chini meanguka, I'm telling a pella to tell the neighbor and angalia bibi yake, namambia mimi diyo now the water yako, what are you saying? I am your husband. <laughs> God is good. You know, at times when you want to get to the presence of God, sometimes you feel, I was telling a pill, I'm feeling something off. But we pray that the Lord will take charge of this service. Praise the Lord. And it started last night while preparing. This thing, this technology decided not to charge. This thing, I always tell you, this thing, don't depend. This thing refutes to charge. We get to the service, the screens are okay, and then suddenly, they're not okay. The enemy always has a way to frustrate God's people. You've prepared yourself, you want to go for a fellowship for Acacia, suddenly something comes up. I pray that as I bring this word today, discernment will be key in your life. Praise the Lord. That you'll be able to know when is the devil fighting what God has in store for you and when is God saying, please be careful of where you're going. Praise the Lord. Discernment. Today we're not talking about discernment, but the preeminence of Christ in creation. And last week, 
we talked about four things looking at the supremacy of Christ in the gospel. In the gospel. We looked at it in the gospel. So for the whole of this season, it will be more about supremacy of, of Christ. So last week was in the gospel. Today is still in the gospel, but in creation. And we said, and we, or rather we saw, Christ's authority affirmed for you and me that you are a created being of Christ. We also said Christ's work in believers' life, that he's still working and he commends his people for what he's doing, for what you are doing. He will commend you for all you're doing. We also saw Christ's truth proclaimed to all believers and then finally Christ's wisdom being sought. Today, we are looking at Christ's, the supremacy of Christ in creation. The supremacy of Christ in creation. And I want us to go to that reading, Colossians, so make sure you're there at Colossians and John, mark your Bibles, Colossians and also at John, chapter 1, 1 to 12, then Colossians chapter 1, 13. So these verses reveal not only the nature of Christ as the creator, but his integral role. When you read John, he says, in the beginning, he starts by saying, in the beginning, was the word, and the word was with God. When you come to Colossians chapter 2, chapter 1, from verse 13, he says, for he rescued us from dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption. But down there he says, he is the image from verse 15. The image of invisible God, the first over all creation, for in him all things were created. So he's a part of the creation story. What is the main word that you want to learn today? That Christ is both the agent and the essence of creation. Agent and essence of creation. And to help us understand this, the supremacy of Christ. I have these four points just to drive this home. The first thing is created all things. Created all things. He says in verse 15 of Colossians, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In Hebrew, or rather Greek, is prototokos. Say prototokos. Hey. Prototokos. It's just like the first one. You, you, from the word pro. You know protocol? People who go before the, maybe the head of state before these other people who like protocols. Me and Apella, we don't have protocols. We just like that. We just appear and we just disappear, you know. But there are those who like protocols. Protocols. So prototokos is the firstborn means the firstborn. And it appears eight times in the Old, in the New Testament. Eight times. So, he's saying he is the me image for in him actually God, the firstborn of all creation. But we're saying created all things. The universe. The design that you see. Emphasizing before anything is this is Christ was. Before anything, Christ was. So we are saying created all things. The second one is redeems all. Redeems all. Redeems all. The redemptive work of Christ is central to his supremacy. 14 says, if you are 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. So he redeems all. Father, he illustrated by this, emphasizing that those who receive him, John says, if you read now John, if you go to John, if you have your Bible, down there it was written, read to us that those, verse, from verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. So number one, you have said what? Created all things. Number two, you are saying, redeems all. And you see what he's saying here. That we have redemption through him. The act of redemption showcases not only his authority. Remember, redemption 
refers to the act of being saved from sin, error, evil, involves a payment. There was a cost for you to be called a child of God. He who was there before creation gave his life for you. Redemption. So he redeems all. But there's a condition. You have to say, yes, Jesus, I want to accept you. Number three, restores all. You know, redemption and restoration, they are almost the same. But the uh, um, um, uh, definition of restoration is bringing something back to an original state. So redemption, you are a slave. Something has to be paid for your release. Restoration on the other side, you have been released, but now there are things in life which are following you. You are born again, you are sick. Jesus brings healing, praise the Lord. You are born again, you have issues in your marriage. God brings you back. You are born again, you have issues with your business. God restores, restoration. So he restores all things. He restores. He reconciles you to God. It's not limited to individuals only. Even in nature, for those people who love nature. Restoration. Like there's a river in Nairobi, the Nairobi River. Very, I am told in those years, it was very clean. You could even take the water. But right now, it is in a bad state. And process of restoration is happening. So it is still there. But there's a problem. Restoration. So what was number one? Hey, I'm not here. I'm only, here. I'm only hearing our pastor. What was number one? Created, including you. Number two? He redeems. There was a price that was paid for you to become a child of God. Number three, we have said what? He restores all. The number four and last sustains all. The Bible says, still in the same verse. For in him all things were created, heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers, all things have been created through him. Verse 17, if you read it, it says, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. He sustains all things. Not only created you, you fell into sin. A cause of blood was given. Redemption. You are born again and things are following you in your family, in your life. He still comes to restore you and still assures you, my brother, my sister, I will sustain you. He sustains you few lessons from these four points that I've said. Number one, when we talk about created all, I want to encourage you to embrace your purpose in creation. Embrace your purpose in creation. For by him, all things were created both in heavens. Jesus is always present for you. Look at your, media, tell, take, look at your neighbor, tell him you are created in the image of God. Tell them you are created in the image of God. So by that, live out your purpose. Live out your purpose. You, the creation of God, live out your purpose. Embrace your purpose of creation. You are not an accident on earth. Number two, Redeems all. Recognize your worth and value. Recognize your worth and value. He says, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. For all who received him, he gave them power to become children of God. Recognize your worth. Let nobody say you are worthless. Each person is valuable enough for Christ to lay down his life. You, my brother, my sister, Christ gave up his life for you. Number three, 
in restores all seek restoration in Christ in relationships knowing that Christ restored all things from darkness to light the Bible says in verse 13 for he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom which part of your life needs restoration whether it's mending broken relationship with family, friends, we are called to embody this restoring power of God. Restoration. Restoration in relationships. Finally, sustains all. Depend on Christ for daily strength. In sustenance of God, depend on Christ for all. He says in 16, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones or powers or rulers. Depend on Christ for daily strength. He will sustain you. When we were singing Pekeyangu Sitaweza, that is what I was trying to say. You cannot make it alone. Depend on God. Look up to Jesus for great is his faithfulness. When Christ rescues you, he also provides. Remember their dominions and minions that even some of us here today could be depending on them. In the morning you are in church. At night you are at Amuganga somewhere. Some have even visited them and have been told things. You are going to things which God created to look for help. That somebody named you after somebody and this somebody is going through something. Then you go and visit Amuganga and then Amuganga says you are named after this person. That is where the problem is. That my father had this problem. My grandfather had this. Don't attach yourself. Those are created things. And for you who believed in God, you are now a child of God. He will sustain you. Praise the Lord. It's only the sustenance of God. He holds everything. He holds everything. Depend on God. Don't depend on created things. Don't depend on me and Reverend Apella. There are some who say only when me and Apella pray, God will hear. No. Depend on God. Praise the Lord. He has given you power and you have access to God. There are some here who are seated... If only this person, this authority will not say something, you don't believe any other thing. That's why you'll be told to take nails and you'll take nails and put them somewhere. You can pray for yourself. Hallelujah. You are a child of God. Depend on God. He will sustain you. He will not only redeem you, he will not only restore you, he will also sustain your life. I want us to stand. From what you have said, I pray that you will commit. Embrace your purpose in creation. There are people who have been damaged because of what people say with regards to you. Oh, you are too short. Or you are too tall like me. You are too fat. You feel bad. You are ugly. 
And when people say these things, you find yourself going to Mombasa to look for Mokorogos. I was seeing Apella, I see Apollos. Appreciate. You are in the image of God. Praise the Lord. The way you are, not only the image, very special being before God. Don't allow anything to define who you are. Recognize your worth. Contribute to the church of God. And I pray that you will change. So that the sustenance of God. If you have ever been depending on what people say. Stop. Depend on God. Depend on God. Depend on God. He is supreme over creation. Don't ever depend on created things. Whether it's your house, it's created. Whether it's your car, it's created. Don't feel nimefika. No. Depend on God. He is supreme. He was there even before creation. Do you need redemption? He is available. Do you need restoration? He is available. Do you need true sustenance? He is a violent.